tonight, I'm going to take you to Papua New Guinea, um, a country that is steeped in culture and history, but also famed for its, its avifauna and especially the birds of paradise. Now, I've got a bit muffled there, so I didn't introduce myself. My name's Max, I'm an operations assistant talking to you this evening from Northeast Hampshire. A very good evening. Okay, so we do two tours to Papua New Guinea. One is the Highlands and Islands tour, which takes in the Central Highlands, um, shown here on the map, but it also ventures over to the islands on the right-hand side, and that is the island of New Britain. Now, tonight I'm going to talk about a different tour, which um, occurs in October, um, and that is our Specialist Birds of Paradise trip. Um, so during this tour, you could see, see between 15 and 20 Birds of Paradise, so it is a very exciting trip indeed. So this is a, the topography of the uh, of New Guinea. Um, so split down the middle, you have the Indonesian New Guinea on the west and Papua New Guinea on the east. And here you can see that in red, those are the central highlands that run through the centre of the island, and either side you have the lowlands. So a bit on the birds of Papua New Guinea. This is mainly a birding trip, mainly due to because of hunting that is still ongoing out in the country, which means that mammals are extremely difficult to find. So to the birds, there are seven endemic bird families that are on, on in Papua New Guinea, and three of which are monotypic. So there's only one species in that genus, and these are the blue-capped blue ifrit, the mottled berry hunter, and the wattled plowbill. So the, the image on the right hand side there, that is the wattled plowbill. There have been a total of 865 species of bird recorded in Papua New Guinea, and including 35 of which are the birds of paradise. And there's over 100 endemic species as well. So on our first afternoon, um, it's quite a long flight, isn't it, from, from the UK. So we can either land in Hong Kong or Singapore or even Australia to get to Port Moresby, the capital city of um, Papua New Guinea. And our first afternoon is spent in the, in the Pacific Adventist University grounds. So these are private grounds, so perfectly safe to venture around. And that's probably a good time to mention that, although in the past, many decade, decades ago, Papua New Guinea did have a bit of um, an odd past. However, nowadays it is perfectly safe um, uh, in July 2019, I spent a month out in Papua New Guinea, going to the main areas, main bird watching areas, but also venturing over to some very remote areas as well. So it's perfectly safe. So during these grounds, and it's a, a brilliant place to start your bird watching on uh, in Papua New Guinea. Um, and there are some species here that you may not see elsewhere during the tour. So these are the grounds, and you can expect to see in, around the perimeter the bower of the uh, fawn-breasted bowerbird. Now, this is a good time to say that most of these photos tonight are in fact mine, probably 95% of, of them are mine. Um, so this is the bower of the fawn-breasted bowerbird, a regular species seen around the ponds. And as is this masked lapwing, an absolutely superb bird that's seen, it could be one of the first photos seen in Papua New Guinea, actually. Uh, the, they are often seen around the airfields. A Teresian imperial pigeon is another class bird that you can see here. And plumed whistling duck is just one of many ducks that can be encountered on the ponds amongst the wandering whistling ducks, Pacific black ducks, and uh, gray teal. So a nice variety there. But probably the main highlight of our trip to uh, these, these university grounds is to see the Prakwan frogmouth. Um, so this is a highly cryptic species, um, and it's also nocturnal. And, and if you can't really see, this is the bill here. Hopefully you can see my arrow, and of course the tail at the bottom there. So our next day, we will head east from Port Moresby, the capital city, to Vararata National Park. And um, now this is probably the best bird watching destination on the island, and, and that's from personal experience. But the bird life is extremely abundant. Um, and some of the species you see here are absolutely unforgettable. So this is uh, the standard trails that are found in the National Park. And it's probably best to say from now that um, the terrain across the island 
is generally like this, even in the mountains, um, it's not a strenuous trip at all. Um, so it's, a, it's nice and easy going, you don't need a high level of fitness. So here we go, the first bird of paradise. This will probably be the first bird of paradise you'll encounter on Papua New Guinea. And it's the national bird, the Ragiana bird of paradise. Now, thankfully, the birds of paradise on the island have their known leks. So the local guides that we use, uh, they know exactly where these leks are, not just of the birds of paradise, but all the other birds around as well. Um, and they will take you to get the best views. So this is my photo. Um, so here you can see the views are absolutely superb. And this is a male uh, displaying to the two females in the background. An absolute superb bird and just incredible. Now moving on to the Birds of Paradise, another bird seen, uh, seen in Vararati National Park. This is the hooded patui. Now I've chosen this bird to show you, um, mainly because it's toxic. So a few decades ago, uh, when bird ringers came in to trap them in the birds and release them, and um, someone holding, or someone who held the, this patui, um, they found out they had a, quite a large rash on their hand. And further studies have proven that the feathers and the muscle tissue is actually toxic. Now, kingfishers are well, well represented in the national park. This is a blue winged kookaburra. And if you do come to the park, you'll probably see it on this exact perch as it was there and every time we drove in and out of the park. Brown-headed paradise kingfisher is another top target of the national park. Now, paradise kingfishers are slightly different from the standard kingfishers. As you can see here, they have extremely long tail streamers um, and are very attractive indeed. Yellow-billed kingfisher, another smart bird that you can encounter here. And these are often found in the high treetops. And this forest bittern, this is a much sought after bird by, by many bird watchers that come to Papua New Guinea. And a few, few years ago, I was extremely lucky to find this individual. Um, the guides, they will take you around these trails towards dusk, and this is the best time to um, view this incredible skulking bird. Now, another true skulker and a bird that does that does not come out until late evening is the barred owlet nightjar. And again, our local guides know the exact holes of where these birds occur. Um, I know it's not very clear here, so I've stolen a stock photo just to give you an idea of what one looks like. Okay, so moving around Papua New Guinea, the only reasonable way of doing this is by air. Um, if you were to drive around, firstly, it's not very safe and the trip will be four times as long because the roads, as I'm sure you can imagine, are not that great. So we take our plane and fly up towards the central highlands, based in the centre of the country, uh, landing at Mount Hagen, and then taking a one or two hour journey to our first lodge at Rondon Ridge. Now, as you can see, the weather is normally much better in the mountains as it compared to the lowlands. And it's probably a good time to say there are two seasons in Papua New Guinea, and these are famed as the wet season and the wet season. Uh, but thankfully, we go in the drier wet season, which is normally between July and October. Absolutely superb views from the mountains. You're normally above the clouds, and it's great to see some blue sky. Now, this is our first lodge that we stay at, and who thought you would find accommodation such as this in Papua New Guinea? But it really is a very smart lodge at Rondon Ridge. It's even smarter in the inside. Here we go. And you also get a bedroom with a nice view as well. So this is a twin bed overlooking the mountains there, and also a double bed as well. Now, of course, if it's not all about the birds, if you're into your culture, um, this is a great place in the mountains to see that. And these are mud men. Um, so yes, um, plenty of culture up here in the mountains. And during the day when the birding is not as busy, uh, you can go out and um, sample some of this. So this is the typical terrain you would expect to find um, in the highlands. Uh, so this is a typical forest track. We do most of our birding from these tracks. Uh, there are a couple of interior trails as well, which we will go on. But it's generally um, these wide open tracks here, mainly because the birds are attracted to the forest edge. 
And Vondong Ridge is famed for its long list of birds of paradise, and we will spend plentiful time in search of them. Uh, the first one that we may hear and then hopefully see is the King of Saxony bird of paradise. Absolutely incredible. Um, I can't comprehend how amazing this bird is. Um, and good things with these birds of paradise, they do tend to stay to a, a similar area. So this bird is on its famous perch there, and it will use this year round. An absolute superb, superb bird. Now another is the uh, blue bird of paradise, another marvellous species that again, you normally hear first before you see. And the great Lotharina, and it was formerly known as the superb bird of paradise, but now they've been split three ways. Uh, so the Greater Lofarina, again, in full display mode. And this is the amazing thing about this tour. Uh, we may well see, see between 15 and 20 species of Bird of Paradise, but also you may see many of them displaying as well. Princess Stephanie's Astrapia. Um, <laughs> there we go. I think the picture says enough there. An absolutely wonderful bird that, again, you will almost certainly see around London Ridge. Not that rare at all. Now your local guides may wish to take you to see the lesser bird of paradise. These are not very common at all across the entirety of Papua New Guinea. However, there are some known sites in the central highlands. And so you may just get lucky and your local guide may take you. Now, unfortunately, I've not got a picture of Kumul Lodge. Uh, we don't actually stay at Kumul Lodge. Uh, we just spend um, an afternoon there. And that's because they have these fruit feeding stations around their grounds, as well as some very impressive trails. And here you can, you can almost be within arm's reach of these brightly coloured birds, but also a number of birds of paradise as well. So this chap, this is a Belford's honey eater, um, a, a specialist of the uh, high mountains. Uh, Bren's tiger parrot, an absolute superb species of parrot that you almost certainly would not see um, on the forest trails. Um, here is definitely your best spot to see them. Brown sicklebill, now this is another bird of paradise that's come down to these feeding stations and show extremely well. And the ribbon-tailed astrapia, now this bird of paradise has the longest tail of any bird of paradise. And believe it or not, this, the tail on this bird is actually at half a length. So um, just add another tail onto that, and that would be the full length of this bird's tail. Absolute incredible species, bird family. Now the crested satin bird, this used to be a bird of paradise, but it's been chucked out sadly. Um, I'm not sure why, because it's an extremely striking bird. But again, around Kumor Lodge is an exceptional area to view this beautiful bird. Blue cat ifrit, so this is one of the monotypic species I mentioned earlier. And these often act like tree creepers around these high montane areas on moss clad in the forests. Papron fly robin are frequently encountered, much commoner than those. And great cuckoo dove as well are just one of many other species you may see up here in the highlands. Now, butterflies are also well represented across the country. Um, now this is a, another bird wing species. This is a Queen Alexandra or Goliath bird wing species. It depends where you are on Papua New Guinea and, and that determines its name, but this is thought to be one of the largest species of butterfly in the world. A Hewitson's bush brown and Tenaeus catops are just other species that you will encounter. These are extremely common across the country. Now, this is a typical raging river that you will see in the mountains, very good for the torrent fly robin and torrent lark um, that are found only in the highlands and next or on these, on these rivers. Okay, so now we take a, a shorter flight um, over to the northwest segment of Papua New Guinea to Sepik province, and this is Karawari Lodge. Now, here at this lodge, there are no roads, and no form of transport getting there apart from that, that plane journey because they have their own airstrip. And then it's a quick transfer to the hotel. And these are the views that greet you when you're there. Absolutely superb. A very similar layout in the bedrooms to Rondon Ridge. It's really good time to mention the food as well. Food is vegetarian or non veggie so perfectly capable of handling um, all those needs. And 
And this is the Yavin Lodge um, that we use, and this is in the southern province. And this is Lake Murray Lodge. Uh, so there's two lodges that we use from now on. Uh, I've not got enough time really to, to speak about both, but um, two superb lodges again. So one of the activities that you can expect to do when out in the Northwest province or in the southern province um, is do a boat journey along the very quiet rivers here. Uh, so this is a perfect way to view as many birds as possible. So, and um, as I said earlier, the birds get attracted to the forest edge and it's just a fantastic place to view so many brightly colored birds. So here's a nature, nature tech group from a few years ago. Hopefully they're enjoying themselves, I think they are. So these are some of the birds you can expect to see. These are Papron hornbills, and the male and female, absolutely exquisite birds. The, the Asia kingfisher, as Georgie showed you earlier in Australia. Palm cockatoo, one of the largest cockatoos. Absolutely wonderful bird. And raptors are also do very well here in these more open lowland areas. This is a pygmy eagle, uh, but probably one of the commonest eagles, in fact around the lowlands. And this is a Pacific Baza, a very smart bird of prey that can be found all across Southeast East Asia and also around Australasia as well. Um, absolutely beautiful bird, probably no larger than a female sparrowhawk. Now we do take off into the uh, jungle as well. Uh, there are a couple of forest trails that we will go on, but the birding along here is extremely difficult. Um, so do not expect to get frame filling photos and um, hence why I've included this photo of a common paradise kingfisher. So these are some of the views that can be typical of some species. So they're extremely skulky, but eventually um, you do get the views and it's extremely rewarding. New Guinea vulturine parrots or pesky's parrot is another top target of, of this area. Um, and these extremely large parrots give off a very raucous vulture-like call as they fly very low over the canopy. Now, as you can probably tell, this is a captive superb fruit dove. You can tell by its rings and its legs there. However, I have included this just to give you an impression of how brightly coloured the fruit doves are on Papua New Guinea. And there's roughly 10 species you could see um, across your 16 day tour. Now, this is probably one of the highlights, especially for myself, um, when, um, sorry, when traveling along the river systems here. This is a, a crowned pigeon, a southern crowned pigeon, um, and it's an absolutely huge bird, three times the size of the wood pigeons we have here. And of course, it has that amazing hairdo as well. An absolutely exquisite bird and one that you're very likely to see on the boat tours. But this is probably my favorite bird of all in the world. Um, this is the king bird of paradise, one of the smallest birds of paradise in, in the entirety of New Guinea. And um, in my eyes, one of the smartest. You can see its tail there, the tail coming down and forming those loops at the end. Uh, but it's just a bizarre bird. And getting a, a frame fitting view for a scope of this bird is one of my top ornithological highlights. And I just hope that. Um, that some of you this evening venture out to Papua New Guinea and set eyes on this absolutely beautiful bird. And there it is there, absolutely incredible. The 12 wild bird of paradise is just as beautiful and you can see it's 12 wire tail there and it uses um, these strands to caress the female when displaying. Um, but again, it's just another top bird and that you can expect to see around the lowlands and especially adjacent to the rivers. Great bird of paradise is another bird of paradise that you can expect to see in the lowlands in the, and in the southern province, not in the northwest, but in the south. Um, and again, your local guides across the country know where these leks are and they will take you to them and you can stay there for as long as you wish and just savouring in the pure your majesty of these absolutely wonderful birds. Nocturnal activities, and again along the rivers are a perfect time to catch up with some nocturnal birds. Marbled frogmouth here is um, an absolutely wonderful and ghost-like bird. 
Uh, but also this chap, the Wallace's Owl at Nightjar. Um, it, it wasn't that long ago this bird was discovered and new, new sites are still being found to this day. So it's extremely exciting birding experience. And that's it. So I'm going to leave you with a, a lovely view of the, of the Adalbert mountain range in the far north of an uh, untouched primary rainforest. Uh, and as you're flying in between these sites, you get to see plenty of primary rainforest across the island. And it's very encouraging to see that, especially when all these amazing birds are found here. And of course, if you do wish to travel to other parts of Papua New Guinea, where there are yet more amazing birds to be found, then please just get in touch. We can arrange that for you um, on top of the uh, standard 16 day tour to Papua New Guinea. So I'll leave that there. Thank you very much indeed for listening. If you have any questions, then I'll be happy to answer them. But for now, I will pass you back to Sarah. Thank you.